What is it and which do you think has been cheated? I can't taste any difference in taste. You're not going to like it when I say the Sebbers, but A is looser and B is stiffer. Good argue there's a fair amount of wastage left. Cheers. Cheers. This one's rougher. That is a great hack. Smash or pass? Choose the cheat, A or B. Why has this become a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, boys, round one, this is how it's going to work. Under one cloche is a dish that we have prepared entirely from scratch using raw, fresh ingredients. Under the other cloche is exactly the same dish, except we've used one big cheat or hack that you might find in a professional kitchen. Ooh. Mmm. Ooh. You've got A and B. Prod them, sniff them, taste them. So visually, A a smoother, B a rougher more uniform. What are they? Are they fish cakes? Pretty much what you have in front of you are salt cod croquettes. With a nice herby dip. Well damn, they are absolutely delicious. I'm going to use the word stupendous. Dunk it. This one's rougher. Mm. Feels the same. Is there any noticeable difference? If so, what is it and which do you think has been cheated? Oh, it feels like the, the middle's smoother or maybe thicker. I feel like these are this is spongier. More coagulated. Mm. Flavour's still exactly the same, isn't yeah. it? Basically, it's, it's mashed potato, salt cod. It's got some dairy in it, but also it's got the smoked paprika. There is a definite difference. Mm. So that tastes creamy, almost, almost bechamel-y. A, you get a real taste of the potato and the cod. I'm going to need you to scribble down A or B. Which do you think is the cheated version? And there's a bonus point if you can work out what the cheat is. What you got? One, two, three. B. Oh, what, what, what? I put, it's got some sort of thickener, but with two C's <laughs> because it's thick. <laughs> thickener, okay, yeah. fine. I put A. Smash, that's it. I was and thinking smash. custard powder, but the potato version. Custard powder. Which is potato powder. Okay, I can reveal to you that in this instance, the cheat and the hack is A. Balls. And the answer is instant potato powder. Yes! Which was better? B. B. You preferred B? Yeah. I preferred the fact that they looked homemade. I preferred the taste and texture of B. I thought it was smoother. I thought it had something else. I felt like A tasted of cod, paprika, and potato. A is potato and salt cod, a little bit of smoked paprika and some dairy. Whereas B has got eight times as much flour in it to get it to hold any kind of form. And as a result, it's quite doughy. The beauty of instant potato powder, smash in this case, is it's made from real potato and it's a dehydrated product. So you've got much more control and consistency over it. It's gonna be shelf stable, which means it's got a really long shelf life. It has a consistency to it, which means it always performs the same. And how much quicker and more convenient is it to prepare? But the standout difference was the equipment. To make the cheated version, Kush used one pan, one whisk, one jug, and two small bowls. Whereas to make it from scratch, he used two pans, one whisk, one spatulator, one potato masher, one colander, one jug, one peeler, one knife, one chopping board, two small bowls, a sieve, and eight times as much flour. I mean, I've never even heard of a spatulator. But I want to review one yeah. in the gadgets video. What did I say? A spatulator? spatulator. Sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what I said? Spatulator. I mean, as soon as I picked that up and ate it, my first reaction was, wow, that's damn delicious. So I think it goes to show that there's an excellent result with the cheat there. And I wouldn't even consider making that because of how long it would take. You can add it to thicken like soups and sauces in a very sort of natural, quick, instant way. You can use it to make pretty awesome potato tops to go on top of things you might have spent a lot more time doing. That is a great hack that is not only quicker and easier, but also tastes great. I haven't got it and I wouldn't know where to use it outside a mashed potato until now. Whilst we are keeping score and it's a competition, we also have one more question for you. Is instant dehydrated potato powder smash or pass? <laughs> I'm still not entirely sure I understand why you've asked me to say that. Within this context, I feel that's an okay question. I will say smash. Smash. Round two. Be careful what's under the cloche, might be warm. Oh. 
What you have is two versions of a vegetable lasagna and one big cheat. So lasagna, obviously we're talking some kind of ragu. In this case, it's a lentil-based ragu, layers of pasta and layers of a white sauce. Cheers. Cheers. Both starting with A. Quite, it's delicious. B. It's cleaner. The white sauce is white, whereas I feel like in A, the white sauce and the cheese has merged. I'm not sure I can taste much of a difference, if any. I don't know if it's taste or it's just texture. Do you have a preference? I think I prefer B as a cleaner bite of lasagna with more defined layers. Whereas A feels a bit sloppier and like everything's merging more into one and I feel like the cheese or the bechamel is doing that. Okay, but we need you to choose the cheat, A or B. You both think A is the cheat, Ooh. and you both think it's the cheese. Yeah, this cheese in A is really glossy, runny. It's very smooth. I can reveal that you are both correct, but for the wrong reason. No. Oh no. A has indeed been cheated. A uses carton bechamel sauce. Is that a thing? UHT bechamel sauce, which means it is shelf stable will sit in your cupboard until you need it. And in comparison to making bechamel from scratch, which some normal home cooks might not have the time for, might struggle to get it super smooth, this is literally snip off the corner and away you go. I can't taste any difference in taste. It's all texture. That's just a bit thicker and I'd say a little bit more pleasant. When you make bechamel from scratch, you need to weigh out your flour and your butter. You turn those into a roux in a pan with either a spoon or a whisk, and then you're adding in your milk. Traditionally, would have been infused separately and warmed up and added in a bit at a time, and you hope you have something that's smooth at the end. If you do it properly, it's really easy. It's a basic skill everyone should use. You can then add in cheese or flavours or other things at the end. But in this instance, we snipped the corner off a carton and squeezed it over. This is an ingredient that Kush, for instance, has used before on yachts. So when you're a long way from fresh ingredients, or you haven't got the butter or milk in the fridge, that is something that will sit in your cupboard until you need it. Guess how many ingredients there are? Twelve. Five. Oh. Whole milk, cream, wheat flour, cornstarch, salt. Having looked at that carton, I would have expected it to be absolutely packed full of preservatives yeah. and stabilizers and everything. So the fact that it isn't is actually... A really positive thing. Yeah. Think of the other places you might use a bechamel. It works really nicely as the base to a pie with some sauteed veg and some chicken and some a dollop of mustard. It works really nicely with um, fish to make a fish pie with some oh, peas out of the freezer. Suddenly it's tender. just a really quick hack. Why has this become a thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay then, question for you. Carton UHT bechamel sauce. Is it simply the besh? Or will it just roux in your meals? <laughs> For me, it's not going to ruin your dishes, but I'm also not sure it's simply the besh. <laughs> well, like somewhere it, in between. I feel like... <laughs> oh, I'm going straight down the simply the besh. That is, that's amazing. I think we've broken Mike, <laughs> but he's, in, he's on board. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Round three. Another cheat or hack. Trifle. What you've got is a roasted stone fruit trifle. Again, one of them has been made entirely from scratch and one of them uses a cheat. You're such a Barry Taylor. What's the difference? Is there a difference? How much of a difference? Which do you prefer? You're not going to like it when I say this, Ebers, but A is looser and B is stiffer. Fine. Same as before. A has bechamel in it. <laughs> <laughs> Flavour wise, I don't think there's much difference. Choose the cheat, highlight the hack. You've both put exactly the same oh, answer. Wow. Is it correct? I think B had ready-made custard. Powder. Oh, you think like I ambrosia, think, like yeah. out of a carton? Yeah. You are both correct. 
but Mike, you are more correct. The custard layer has been made with custard powder and it's essentially a flavoured, slightly coloured cornstarch, which we used in Viennese Whirls with Ravneet Gill. There was custard powder in there. But in this instance, we've swapped homemade custard for bird's custard powder. So A, the one we've made from scratch, has got obviously egg yolks, so added cost and fresh eggs in it, as well as the cream and the sugar. It's also got a little bit of thickening agent in the form of cornstarch. Whereas B is custard powder, which is predominantly cornstarch with a little bit of flavouring and colouring. There we go, okay. That's what nice to see. So obviously, in a dish where you're layering up loads of different things, by the time you combine it with sponge fingers and jam and uh, cream and roasted stone fruits and fresh fruit, it's just one of many things and there's less to differentiate. But even on its own, just try A and B. For me, there's no competition. A yeah, I agree. tastes and feels so much better. However, in a trifle setting, where it's got everything else going on, I preferred the eating experience of B. Did you? Well, yeah. I think I enjoyed the eating experience of A. I felt like because it was slightly looser, that, again, quite similarly to the bechamel in the, in the first lasagna, goes everywhere and carries all the sweetness from the fruit. I mean, we're talking minimal difference, so if, it's, if that's a lot easier, it's a no-brainer. It's a little bit easier, it's a little bit less equipment, it's also a lot more surefire. The number of people who scramble the making of a custard or are put off by the fear of having to make your own custard and avoid letting it scramble, there is definitely an accessibility um, benefit from using like a custard powder. Or, you're right Jay, out of a carton. You can buy it ready-made and we've done that countless times on the channel as well. When it comes to this particular one, we're not talking about a professional kitchen in a restaurant or something like that. We're thinking of other environments. I think it depends on its application. There'll be a lot of places that would still base it on that and then potentially embellish it. So for example, to make that and then to melt some white chocolate through it and make like a white chocolate custard that's go inside of a profiterole or something like that, by the time people have eaten it, they have no idea. And actually it's a shelf stable security blanket. That said, we probably are talking more uh, schools, offices, canteens, mass production. Okay, question for you. Mm. Custard powder. Is it a stable store cupboard staple that's there to save you? Or is it just a trifle rubbish? Oh, right, you gave, uh, up, on, nice. gave up on the last one. Yeah. yeah. It's a, st oh no. Staple that's there to save you, probably. Is that what you said? I think so. I like it. I'm going to say the first one, but I don't think in this scenario. Oh. I think it's fine and it does the job here, but I think actually it's far more helpful to me in other scenarios. Final one. Whoa. You've had dessert. Where are we going next? Back to main course, of course. <laughs> Have a little bit of that and dunk it into A, and then go for B and dunk it into B. The sauce is delicious, mustardy, acidic. Those sauces are very different. They are, this one tastes like gravy. Mm. Yeah, in both instances, it is pork with a honey mustard cream sauce. Which plate do you prefer? Which is a different question, perhaps, to which plate do you think has the cheat? I think I prefer A because it's slightly more subtle. Mm. So you get more of the pork. A, it sort of lifts the pork. I think you get more mustard. B tastes more pre-made to me, mm. but I'm not sure which element of it is. Scroll down your answers. Again, it is the cheat or the hack that you're trying to pluck out. You've both put B as your hack. Mike thinks it's gravy granules. Yeah, instant gravy. Gravy grands. Gravy grands. It's a bunch of grandmothers that go around. And Jay just thinks it's a pre-made sauce. Spend the money on the quality meat and just buy a pre-made sauce. I can reveal that Mike is correct with gravy granules, but you're both wrong on B. Oh. No way. A is the cheat, and it uses chicken gravy granules as the base which then has mustard, a little bit of alcohol and cream added in. 
Whereas B, we roasted off chicken bones, chicken wings, onion, veg, herbs, then used a stock to save time, but reduced that right down before turning it into very umami, very rich, very powerful sauce. But it took an awful lot more time, effort, and you could argue there's a fair amount of wastage left. Wow, I actually preferred the taste of that in this application because you could taste the pork. I wonder whether that's because it tastes more familiar though, because of the gravy grains. No, I didn't, th I thought that was more familiar. I thought that had more going on. I could taste mm. more going on personally. It tastes so much better than the sum of the parts in theory. Looking at gravy granules, I feel like I've only ever looked at gravy granules as gravy, yep. not as oh, this could be the start of something, and then adding other bits to it. It's a really good way of adding in rich flavour, a fair amount of seasoning that tends to be quite salty, but something that is built to give you big flavour in very little effort. Final question for you then. Is this all gravy, baby? Or a grave mistake? Oh, ah. it's all gravy, baby. It's all gravy, baby. Even though you didn't win, Jamie takes the win with five points to four. But there's quite a few cheats and hacks there that hopefully you can take with you. I wouldn't say that there was a colossal amount of difference between any of them in terms of taste. It's pretty much a no-brainer to go with all the hacks. Can I add one counterpoint to that though? How much extra processed food is going into the other stuff? And I, obviously that's one of the big things that we've tried to get away from. I completely agree. Like there's huge amounts of ultra processed food out there that we as a nation and as a world are eating far too many of them. But holistically, with convenience and time and cost saving and skill, sometimes some of these hacks are worth having up your sleeve. Well, what do you think? Do you use any of these hacks at home? Comment down below, let us know. And would you like us to do more of these types of videos? If so, give us a like. Simply the besh. Thank you, besher than all the rest, apparently. <laughs> This video for me is just permission. No, once yes, again, it is. you do not need permission from Ebbers to do the things that you want to do. Yeah, but sometimes I do stuff and I'm like, you're trash. Does he ask you permission for the things that he's allowed to do? No. Of course not. No. Yeah, but he, no, because I... it would scar you. 